Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing how we write a piecewise function when we're given a graph. So this is what we want to look at here. First is I want to see how many pieces do I have in this piecewise function. So in this first one, I've got one piece here, a second piece here, and a third piece here. So with three pieces, that means I need three parts to this piecewise function. So as I write it, I start with f of x equals my big fancy curly bracket, and I have three parts. I have this part here, or our left side, when x is less than 1. I've got this part in the middle here, when our x value is between 1 and 2. And then I've got this last part here on the right, when my x value is greater than 2. So then all I need to do with that is I need to decide which one does include which. So this first side includes 1. The middle piece does not include one, but it includes two, and the last piece doesn't include two. So then I want to take these inequalities and translate them right into my function. So if x is less than one, we have a piece. If x is between one and two, we have a piece. And if x is greater than two, I have a piece. So those are the three pieces that we have there less than or equal to one, between one and two, and greater than two. The next thing we have to do is write down the actual equation of that piecewise function. So this first one obviously is curved, so I know it's going to be a quadratic of some kind. So I'm going to look first at my vertex, which is at zero, zero, and then it goes over one, up one, over one, up one. Well, if it has a vertex at zero, zero, and it goes over one, up one in both places, we know our function is going to be x squared. Then we can look at this next piece. It's a horizontal line right at y equals 3. So that means this is just a 3. And our last part here is a line. And it looks like our slope goes up 1 over 1. So our slope is 1. And as we continue this line on, I'm going to do it in green here so you can see. As I continue that line on, I can see that it goes through the point 0, 0. So what that means is that the line here is actually just going to be x. So here we have f of x is x squared when x is less than or equal to 1. As soon as it hits, goes past 1, our line follows y equals 3. And then after that, once it hits 2, it looks like the function or the line x. So that's how we would graph, that's how we would write our piecewise function given the graph. So let's take a look at this next graph here. We're going to do the same thing. So notice first here that there's only one switch. And that switch happens right here at negative 1. So that means on this left side here is when x is less than negative 1. And on this right side is when x is greater than negative 1. And then we have to decide which side includes negative 1. And we can tell by this solid circle here that it's going to be that side. So as we write our piecewise function, we've got two parts. We've got when or if x is less than negative 1, it looks one way. And then if x is greater than or equal to negative 1, it looks the other way. And again, we know that equal to goes with the right side or the bottom one because it has a solid circle there. Now let's take a look at what those equations look like. On the left side, we have a line that's straight across at y equals 1. So we're just going to write that as 1. This other side, we have a quadratic. And what do we know about our quadratic? Well, it looks like this. It has a vertex of negative 3, and then our first points are up 1, over 1 in each direction. So what that tells me is that a equals 1, and our vertex is going to be at the point 0, negative 3. So we can write the equation of that line using vertex form if we want to, and that would be x minus 0 squared minus 3, and there's that 1 in front. We don't need to write this x minus 0 part. So it's actually just going to be x squared minus 3. So x squared minus 3. And we know that because it looks just like our x squared function from this previous page, but it's been shifted down 3. So that is how we would find that. Now, I want to talk about this next one because this next one is actually a little unique. When we talk about piecewise functions, there are two different kinds of piecewise functions. There are continuous piecewise functions, and that's the kind that we've seen recently. And there are ones that we call disjoint piecewise functions. And those disjoint ones are ones that actually kind of break. And they do have a point at some of our x values, but it is not a full function. It doesn't show all of the x values. So let's take a look at this one. So I've got f of x 
equals, and then I have three lines here, right? I've got my red line, my blue line, and my green line. And we have three, we have two, we have a couple places where it splits. Notice this first one splits at negative two. Then our blue one starts, and it stops right here at x equals one. But then our next line doesn't start until after x equals two. But notice how there's nothing here in the middle. We've got nothing here. This is a blank slate. That's what we call disjoint because it doesn't connect. It's not continuous the whole way. It's actually uncontinuous or discontinuous or disjoint. It breaks up. So let's take a look at what happens here when we write that piecewise function. So there's still three colors. This first color, our red one, is on the left-hand side here when x is less than negative 2. Our blue one is in the middle here. And our blue one goes from 2 to 1. Now, it includes the point 1 for sure. And we have to kind of decide. Now, I want you to notice something specific about this one on the left. Notice how there's a solid dot right here at negative 5. That actually means that our function doesn't start until x equals negative 5. So this inequality is actually less than or equal to negative 5. And then we need to decide at which point includes that negative 2. And because they overlap right here at this point, we can choose. I'm going to include it in the bottom one. But it's totally up to you. Now, we have nothing here from 1 to 2. But then on this right side, where our green one is, we do have something. The green one does not start until we get to 2. And then it keeps going, but notice this solid dot here. So it actually is going to stop again at 5. So our piecewise function here has kind of a unique domain and range here. And I want to talk about that after we write this piecewise function. So as we see this graph, actually, let's do it now. Our domain, it actually goes from negative 5 up to 5. Okay, it starts right here, and it stops right there. It doesn't keep going. Our range, on the other hand, is also limited. It starts right here at negative 2, and we will see points on our y-axis here all the way until we get to y equals 4. And then after that, we're going to stop seeing points. So that is where our domain and range are. We're limited here. Nothing is all real numbers. We're very limited in what we're looking at. So now let's write our function. Now our if statements here are going to be a little bit more complex than usual because our domain and range are so limited. Our first one is going to be from negative 5 all the way up to and including negative 2. Our second range, or that blue one, goes from negative 2 all the way up to 1. And then our last one, remember, that space between 1 and 2, it's kind of weird. It's gone. And so that last one doesn't actually start at 1 like we usually do. It starts at 2, and then it goes until we get to 5, and then it stops. This function, or this part here, reminds me a lot more of a step function, which is a type of piecewise function. This reminds me a lot more of a step function than it does of the piecewise functions we were originally looking at. The only difference here is that instead of them each being steps, we have these different looks. So let's take a look at this first one. From negative 5 to negative 2, our red line here. Well, that's just a horizontal line at 0. So this is just going to be a 0. Then we've got our blue one, which is our quadratic. Our quadratic right here has a vertex at 0, 4. And then we go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. So A is going to be a negative 1. So when we write that equation again, we've still got a negative 1 times x minus 0 squared plus 4. Now I want to simplify this x minus 0 because x minus 0 is just x. So I get negative x squared plus 4. And that's what that blue one, that's the equation of our blue line there, negative x squared plus 4. And then lastly, we have our green line here. Our slope of our green line goes over 1, down 1. So our slope is going to be a negative slope. So we've got a negative x. And then we want to continue this line on to see where it crosses our x-axis, and that would be at 3. So this is negative x plus 3. So that's how we're going to write a piecewise function when we're given a graph. We're going to break it down. If for some reason we have a discontinuous or a disjoint graph where it breaks up, notice how these two values are not, they're consecutive, but they're not inclusive. So it doesn't go 1, 
It doesn't end on one on one and then start on one on the next. They split up. They cover different things. And so that's why our domain and range kind of vary. Our domain here actually does not go from negative five to five, but because of that split, our dom domain goes from negative five to one and it goes from two to positive five. It's both of those, but from that point after one, so 1.000001 up until we hit almost two, up until we hit that 2.0000001, that point right after two, we have nothing. And so our domain has to represent that there's nothing there in this black void that we drew. There is nothing here. And therefore, our domain can't include that space. So that is how you would write a piecewise function. Whether our piecewise function is a, two, whether it has three pieces and it's continuous, whether it has two pieces, or whether it is discontinuous and it has three pieces. We write a piecewise function by figuring out where it splits, where we stop one and move to the next line, deciding what those inequalities are related to our x-axis, and then finding those equations. And that is how you would write a piecewise function.